Ethereum Name Service is a very interesting project that is about to launch that will let you resolve human readable names to individual Ethereum addresses. For example, right now when somebody wants to gain access to the screencast on Decipher TV, they need to send Ether to a specific Ethereum address. But that address is a big, long, complicated string that is not very easy to remember or to share. So wouldn't it be cool if instead they could just send Ether to decipher.eth and then the network would know how to resolve that text into a specific address? This is similar to how DNS functions on the web. If I'm on a computer in New York City and I want to access, say, GitHub, well, the code for GitHub might be hosted on a computer in San Francisco. So I need to specify the specific address of where I want my HTTP request to actually go so that the network knows how to route it properly. And this is the idea of an IP address, which tells each node in the system where to send the request until it reaches its final destination. And if I go to my browser and I typed in an IP address directly, you'll see that it actually does go to the exact place that I want it to. But we have the same problem that we do with Ethereum addresses, where the IP address is long and hard to remember and hard to share. So we have a domain name system that lets you map something easier to remember, like github.com, and send it to a DNS service, which will resolve it to an IP address and then send it across the network. So adding this functionality to Ethereum is going to be extremely cool. DNS is built to resolve a variety of different entities into Ethereum addresses, but to start out, it is just focusing on resolving semantic text.eth names into Ethereum addresses with the potential for more functionality coming in the future. Now, if you want to register a name with ENS, you need to go through a registrar contract. And there is a key distinction to note here. There are two different kinds of registrar contracts in the ENS system right now. There is the FIFS registrar, which stands for first in, first served. And then there is the auction registrar. Now, normally, when you register a domain name on the internet, you'll go through a registrar service like GoDaddy. You'll type in a name like decipher.nyc, because I just moved to New York City. And if the name is available, you can select it, purchase it, and buy it. This is the first come, first served model. Whoever buys the domain name first gets the domain name. But the problem that this ultimately leads to is domain name squatting. Some initial gold rush where people quickly buy up all the most sought after domain names and then squat on them indefinitely until somebody pays to get them off their hands. So ENS is going to be doing things slightly differently to try to minimize squatting, which is forcing all .eth name purchases to go through the auction registrar instead. Okay, right now the ENS contract is only deployed on the Robston testnet. And this is the specific address it's at if you really want to look at it. <clears throat> but it is set to be deployed onto the main Ethereum network on March 14th. While it is on the testnet, it also allows you to register dot test names. And these are registered through the FIFS registrar. Once ENS is deployed onto the main Ethereum network, the only thing that will matter are the .eth names and the auction registrar. But having those .test names right now is really helpful for testing purposes. And I promise that this will make a lot more sense in a second as we look at the code. Okay, so there is an NPM library for ENS called Ethereum ENS, and you can install it just like that. But as of the time that I'm recording this screencast, the library is still under active development and has a couple of issues with it. So instead of using the actual NPM module, I'm going to use this helper file called ENS utils. And all this does is it has a list of the public ABIs and the contract addresses for the ENS contracts. Next, I'm going to open up that decipher.js file that I've been using to start my REPL. And if I was using the NPM module, I would require ENS into the global namespace like this. But because I'm not, I'm just going to require ENS into the global namespace using that helper file. And you can find this in the show notes. And then I'm going to instantiate a new instance of ENS. And I'm going to pass in the Web3 instance as an argument. And this Web3 instance is hooked up to the Robson test network via Infura. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to run my node REPL. And I should have the ENS instance. And we are good to go. Okay, so the first thing that I want to point out is this ens.namehash function. Now, when you register names with ens, what's actually being stored is not the name itself, but rather a hash of the name. Okay, so why are they doing this? Two reasons. 
First, it means that every register name will be the exact same number of characters since all of the hashes are the same length, and that's important for optimizing the storage. Also, it makes it harder for anybody to get a list of every name that's registered without having to expend significant computational resources to do it, because somebody would have to compute these hashes for every word when they're looping over words in the dictionary. And in theory, this will help reduce spam on the network. So if I want to see the hash of a name, so let's do decipher.test, I can just do ens.name hash, type in a possible name, and it will give me the name hash of that name. I could also do decipher tv.test, for example. And if I want to see if that name is registered to someone, I can check ens.ens.owner and pass in the name hash. Now, in this case, decipher tv.test is not registered to any account. That's why it's all blank. But if I looked at decipher.test, I can see the Ethereum address that that account is registered to. So I that account is registered to one of my Ethereum addresses, but this one is not. So let's go ahead and actually try to register this decipher tv.test. We can get a hold of the test registrar by doing ens.testregistrar. And that test registrar is a reference to the deployed test registrar on the test net. And we can call the function register on it, which is going to take two arguments. It's going to take the name that we want to register, and then it's going to take an Ethereum address that we want to register the name to. Now note that the address that you're registering the name to does not have to be the same as the address that's making the transaction. So you can essentially register addresses for other accounts. Because I'm using Infura, it doesn't know about any of my Ethereum key pairs. So if I want to actually call this transaction, I need to manually generate a transaction and sign it. So bear with me for a minute while I do this. First, I'm going to import a private key, and I'm going to save that as var p key. And then I'm going to make a, an object that is the new buffer of the p key hex, which I'm going to need to use to sign the transaction. And then I'm going to do var adder. And this address is going to be the public key that this private key um, corresponds to. And then I'm going to use my helper function that I have in this decipher.js library called call contract, which I can use to functionally call a contract with a private key as opposed to needing the keys stored on my local node to do it. Okay, so we can do decipher.callContract and we're going to pass in an object that says deployed is the deployed contract of ens.testregistrar. We're gonna pass in the method name that we wanna call, which is register. Then we're going to pass in the buffer private key that we're going to use to sign the transaction and then the address that we want this to be from, which is just adder. Now we need to pass in the arguments to that function call, which we said are the name that we want to register and the address that we want to register it to. So the name that we want to register is going to be decipher tv.test. The way that we're going to do that is by hashing with web3.sha3 decipher tv with no dot test. So when you're actually passing in the hash that you want to register, it's a SHA-3 hash without the word dot test at the end of it. It's just the front of the name. And then the address we want to register it to, I'm just going to register it to the address that I'm calling this contract from, and we're going to hit enter. And we are going to get a TX hash back from that function, and we can go look on the test net. Um, I'm just going to type it in here. And we'll see that this is an actual transaction that's pending. It knows that it's calling it to this contract. We can see the transaction pending right here. And now the transaction has been mined. We can look at it now and it, you can see that it knows that we are calling the register method and this is the contract address right here and this is the hash that we're trying to store. So now if I go back here and I do ens.namehash decipher tv.test and I look at the ens.ens.owner of that, I can see that this account, which is the same account as the address, is actually the owner of the decipher tv.test account. So remember, the test registrar is the first in, first served registry. I can just register any domain that I want, and this is just for testing purposes, but now that domain is registered. Probably the more interesting workflow is with the ETH auction registrar. In this registrar, there are three states that a name can be in. It can either be available, up for auction or owned. If a name is available, it cannot simply be purchased like we did with the test registrar. It can only be put up for auction. You can think of this as the same format as a fantasy football auction draft if you've ever done one of those before. 
And we can check which state a name is currently in by calling ens.ethregistrar as opposed to the test registrar, and then calling dot entries, and we pass in the web three dot sha three hash of a word. So if I did decipher TV, for example, um, and then we do, we want the first item out of that array and make it a number, we'll see that it gives us a zero. So a zero means that it's in the first state, which means that it is available. You, somebody can put this up for auction. If I looked at a different word that I know for a fact is taken, for example, Ethereum, we can see this is in state two. State two means that it has already been purchased. But if it was in state one, that would mean that it's currently up for auction and can be bid on. So I want to actually try to get to Cypher TV, which means I'm going to need to put it up for auction. Okay, what does that mean? When you put a name up for auction, the auction will run for the fixed length of one week, except for during the first week of ENS's life, when all auctions will run for two weeks. During the week the auction is active, anybody can place a bid on the name. All you have to do is call into the new bid function of the ETH registrar contract and specify the maximum amount that you're willing to bid for the name. You also need to send ether with the bid, but you can send more ether than you're actually willing to bid on the name to help disguise what the amount of your actual bid is. During the last 24 hours of the auction, all bids are closed and the reveal period begins where anybody can call into the contract and reveal the amount of their bid. The highest reveal bid in the, during that reveal period will win the name and all the losers will then get their ether back. So let's go ahead and try to place this deciphered TV name up for auction on the testnet. So I'm going to do decipher.callContract and the deployed contract that I am going to use is the ENS.ethregistrar and then the private key and the method name that I'm going to use is going to be start auction. Now start auction is just going to take one argument, which is the name that you want to put up for auction. But there's another function called start auctions, plural, that takes a, um, a, it takes an array of names. So you can place multiple names up for auction at the same time. So you can use that to kind of disguise which name that you're actually interested in if you're trying to potentially register a name for a specific reason. And then I need to give this the from address, which I'm just going to do adder. And then I need to pass in one argument to this contract call, which is going to be the name that I want to put up. I'm going to do web three dot sha three and then decipher TV. And then we will call that and we're going to get a TX hash and we can go check this out on the test net. Okay, and we can see that the transaction was mined. We call the start auction function. And if we go back to our code here, if I go back to that function I called a little bit earlier, decipher.tv2 number, we'll see that it's in state one, which means that on the testnet, decipher.tv.f is now up for auction. If I wanted to see what time this auction ended, I could actually get the third argument out of this vector and create a new JavaScript date on that number um, times a thousand. And I can see that this auction is set to end on 2017, February 26th, which is a week from now. There's a lot more that you can do with ENS. This is really just scratching the surface. For example, you can make subdomains that you map to different Ethereum addresses. You can transfer ownership of your ENS name. You can run your own private ENS instances that you use to resolve canonical names to Ethereum addresses and your own private blockchains. There's really just a lot to know. Um, two resources that I'll recommend are the documentation on docs.ens.domains. I would suggest reading through this to get a more comprehensive idea of everything ENS can do. I would also recommend reading the Ethereum improvement protocol on github.com slash Ethereum EIPs 162. This has the specification for the registrar as well as discussion about how the auction system works and more kind of um, rationales for some of the decisions made. But I hope that this is at least a good overview of how to get started with ENS and why to be excited about something that is launching in the Ethereum space in a couple of weeks. Peace.